In today's episode, we have had an incident with a USB stick. They told me to keep my documents there. Users lie, they always lie, and never does it make any sense. I thought I was done with her. I cleaned files off my computer, and now it won't boot. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. We have had an incident with a USB stick. This story pertains to an incident which happened at a high school in the early 2000s. I was on work experience and shadowing the tech support. Context of the story This high school is located in an impoverished area, where the majority of families are in receipt of some form of social security, welfare, or food stamps. The school itself didn't have a fantastic budget, so was for the most part still using chalkboards, 20-year-old textbooks etc. In regards to computing, the school had no more than around 25 PCs, running Windows 95, which were for use by staff only. Therefore, a good portion of the school population, 1,200 pupils, had never used a computer before. There was an old tech support guy who had been there since the late 80s who had been trying to establish some form of computer literacy class for several years to no success. Fortunately, the school was awarded a very generous grant by the local government to modernize. This resulted in over the summer vacation, the school purchasing 150 brand new PCs with Windows XP installed, and the full suite of Word, Publisher, and PowerPoint. Each teaching room had also been installed with interactive whiteboards with projectors, and a room had been converted into a computer room to run the computer literacy classes which the old tech support guy had wanted. Unfortunately, he was extraordinarily upset, as a new tech guy, 20-year-old, had been taken on to replace him, and had been in charge of the procurement of the new PCs, their installation, and the ongoing tech support. Old tech guy had been assigned to become a full-time tutor for computer literacy for both the children and fellow staff. To be fair he did enjoy this job but absolutely hated the new tech guy. Story One afternoon, the new tech guy received a call from the old tech guy stating we have had an incident with a USB stick, can you come down please? We arrived at the computer room a few minutes later to see nothing short of minor destruction. The computer room featured a nest of computers on a donut-shaped table, round with a large hole in the middle, in the middle of the room. In the middle of this nest was a mess of kettle leads for the monitors and PC, Ethernet cables, and wires for various peripherals. At least, that is how it had been left before this incident. What welcomed us was all six of the tower PCs plus their CRT monitors had all fallen into the, the hole at the middle of the nest. Apparently what had transpired, an overeager student had tried plugging their USB stick into a USB slot at the front of the PC, and had managed to push it off the back of the desk. When this PC fell off the back of the table into the center of the nest the weight of this tower dragged the CRT monitor with it. The combined weight of these hitting the web of wires in the center of this nest had led to a chain reaction where the rest of the PCs and monitors were all pulled into the hole in the middle. Not to mention a few of the keyboards and mice had also been dragged in. The old tech came across to the new tech smiling like the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland, asking that the new tech fix the problem. We spent the next hour untangling the mess of wires and extracting the PCs and monitors from the middle of the nest, some genius had screwed the desks to the floor. Eventually the final inventory of damage was as follows. Three CRT monitors had become irreparably damaged. Five HDs were damaged beyond economic repair. Two of the power ports required replacing. Three of the tower frames needed repairing. One graphics card had shattered, along with damage to the motherboard. One keyboard was damaged beyond repair. One mouse needed, of all things, a replacement ball, I have no idea why. Would you believe it? but the USB stick survived the destruction. I stayed with the new tech until the end of the shift, at which I went home, after all, I wasn't being paid. I arrived 9am the next morning to discover that he had spent the entire night replacing the hardware, 
had cannibalized from other PCs around the building and reinstalling the OS plus the various softwares required. This was the experience that led to me not choosing a career in tech support. A week of experience had been enough. But I wanted to share nonetheless. They told me to keep my documents there. Was helping a staff member migrate from an old XPS to a new Latitude laptop. Made arrangements for them to drop off their XPS and grab a spare, whilst we backed up their user profile and restored it to the new device. Pretty simple and straightforward operation that we do multiple times per day slash week without issue. User met me outside our office and was flustered because she was so so busy and didn't have time to be dropping off her old laptop and use a spare temporarily. Then hit me with this ditty. Will my recycle bin and emails transfer over? I must have had a puzzled look on my face as I had never heard this request before. I'm not quite sure. Why? I asked. Well, you see, I make originals and then email the originals to people, so files don't live on my computer. They live in the email I sent to people. And any files I do have on my computer, I was told to keep in the recycle bin for safekeeping. Trying to maintain my composure. I started to go over what the recycle bin actually is, and how it functions, and how it's a terrible place to keep files. Especially ones that you rely on and then went into an abbreviated version of how our emails live in the cloud. But who the heck am I to be lecturing Mrs. Recycle Bin about how basic things function in an operating system? She creates originals after all. She immediately started to throw me attitude and kept on with on so so busy, I don't have time for any of this routine. I assured her that we'd back up her profile and get it transferred over to her new laptop shortly thereafter. She grabbed the spare laptop and charger and stormed off to her next Zoom meeting. I proceeded to chuck her old XPS onto a workbench where it sat for most of the day whilst I caught up on other tickets and phone calls and whatnot. Later on that afternoon, I booted her old XPS and proceeded with our normal backup process. Didn't even take that long, was only 600 megabytes or so. Restored the profile onto her new latitude shut it down and it totally slipped my mind to email her with the update about her new device being ready for pickup. Came in the next day and had a ton of missed calls and several voicemails from you know who. Is my new computer ready? Just calling to see if it's ready. Call me back immediately. Sent her an email once I had finished my coffee that her new laptop was ready for pickup and to please call before coming down to our office. Not two seconds later ring 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 she's lighting up my phone. I have a super important Zoom meeting in 20 minutes can I come get my new laptop? Sure I answered. Is it going to take forever to log in? Since you've never logged into the new laptop before. It could take anywhere from 5-10ish minutes, even with the profile restoration. Uh, I don't have time for this. We could do this later in the day I suggested. No I'm so busy I don't have time. Maybe tomorrow? I asked. She hung up on me after that. LOL. Well what do you know? Who's beating on the office door not two minutes later? Mrs. Recycle Bin. I collect her new laptop and charger and open the door. She literally grabbed the stuff out of my hands and stormed off again. Didn't even want me to help set up OneDrive or Outlook or anything. Left the spare laptop on the ground. All around great person, I've got to admit. What's scary about all of this is that she's a director or manager of some pretty important stuff in our company and pulls down a decent salary to go along with all that and keeps her files in the recycle bin. Oh by the way. Did you know that she's super busy and doesn't have time for this and makes originals? Users lie, they always lie, and never does it make any sense. For better or worse, I'm not actually in a tech support role. Just a measly new addition to the dev team, mostly poking around with front-end design. But with everyone out of office for the holidays, 
Someone had to man the dreaded customer support inbox last week and the powers that be decided that even without any relevant training, I would suffice. I figured that'd be fine. I generally know what our tools do, and in the worst case scenario, I may even find it in me to skim through a user manual. So it's just me in this inbox for two days what could possibly go wrong? People. People in input fields, that's what. Bright and early on day one, we get a ticket saying that the date filters are broken. The client wants to see user entries from database for November, but our tool is showing them results for October. I try to reproduce the error on a test database, everything is fine. But when I try the same on their data, it really is all for the wrong month. I stare at the output table for a few moments, it stares back at me. Neither of us budge as I go down the mental list of what the hell could the problem be, and I'm ever so slightly freaking out because if our date filter is somehow broken right before peak reporting time at the end of year when everyone wants to see their data, that would not be good. But then I see it, the date column. Or rather, a string of lies pretending to be the date column. I check the output display settings, and the actual date column is still set to hidden, as is the default. I change it and boom, would you look at that, all entries are suddenly from the right month. But then what's the imposter date doing there? Where did that come from? And actually, why is it just a text variable? Of course, I think. Of course, they would ask their users to add a date of their own to their entries when that's already automatically generated. And of course, they would store it as text as cherry on top. I replied to the ticket with an overly detailed screenshot explaining how to filter by the actual date of entry, and gently nudged them to maybe consider not asking users for factual inputs and expecting them to be correct. I thought I was done with her. We had a clinical supervisor for years at my work. Computers were not her thing. Any change in a system required months of repeating and handholding. Which made me, the admin slash onsite at Goddess spend many hours guiding her to do the same tasks pretty much every day. She decided to retire this past June, thank God since we were rolling out a new database for case notes, and I thought my problems were behind me, nope. We brought her back to do supervision for our practicum students. Today she had her first virtual supervision. We use a web-based platform like Zoom, but more secure, and when appointments are set up for new people, like her personal email, you get an email asking you to set your password. Today, at the time of the appointment, she calls me in a panic asking me what her password is. I tell her she set her password. I don't have it. She then tells me, but you have all the passwords. We have to give them to you. I told her that I have all passwords for the work email things, I don't have personal passwords. If she can't remember what she set the password to, she will need to reset it. Something tells me next week I will get the same call. Please send wine. I cleaned files off my computer, and now it won't boot. Backstory, this took place early 2000s with Windows 98 still commonplace. I worked on a Windows help desk, and we would get all kinds of calls when people did stupid stuff to their computers. Story, one day I answer the phone hello help desk. Customer hello, I needed to make more room on my hard drive, and I cleaned some files off my computer, but now it won't boot, and I cannot figure out why. I cringing as I know this will not be a quick fix. How did you clean these files off your computer? The customer replies I did a file all files anything over 5 megabytes and deleted them all. Yes, you read that right she deleted all files over 5 megabytes in size. I replied well sorry to inform you, but you have just turned your work computer into a paperweight. You made more room on your hard drive by deleting Windows and every program on your computer. I explain the next steps and inform her someone from our tier 2 will be contacting her shortly. I walk over to our tier 2 group and tell him hey I need you to rubber stamp this through to get the user's workstation re-imaged. Coworker you know we cannot do that without troubleshooting the issue. I hand him a printout of my ticket, are you sure you want to troubleshoot this? 
After reading my ticket co-worker never mind approved.